Welcome to Roundabout Design module. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the entry path radius, the exit path radius, the circulating path radius, the left turn radius, and the right turn radius. Normally you see these in civil 3D as R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. So what do these mean? And how are they measured? And how are they very important? You find the speed radius relationship curve as shown here tells us and informs us that one, as you increase the radius, you increase the speed. As you decrease the radius, you decrease the speed. So as you're designing the roundabout, when we are measuring these different entry, exit, and circulating path radii, these influence the speed. Now, it's also very important to understand that do not confuse these with the entry curve radius and the exit curve radius. These normally have the word path to them. So entry path radius, where there is entry curve radius, exit path radius, there's exit radius. Circulating path radius, where there's just circulating radius. Then there's left turn radius and the right turn radius. These form the R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. I don't know whoever came up with this naming convention, but it's quite very interesting. So, what are these? The path curve radii. We have, as I mentioned earlier, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. So R1 is the entry, R2 is the circulating, R3 is the exit, R4 is the left turn, R5 is the right turn. Let's demonstrate this. So R1 is the one in blue. So again, I'm going to use blue. So R1 is this, this red eye that you're seeing here. That's R1, okay? The circulating radius, because the circulating path radius is on the central island. It's an offset from the central island. So that's R2. So R3 is the exit. So you shall find that R1, R2, R3 are on one same constant curve. So as you're entering the roundabout, that's R1, which is the entry path curve radius. As you circulate around the roundabout, that's R2, which is the circulating path radius. And as you exit the roundabout, that's R3, which is the exit path radius. R4, as shown in this drawing, it's going to be the left turn radius. So what's R4? R4 is the movement path that interfaces with R1, R2, R3. So it's the path shown in red. So you move from this other arm and you, in this case, what's happening is you are interfacing with the left turn. And then finally, we have R5. We are going to talk about this in the next lesson. So we have R5, which is this. So what's R1? We, we earlier mentioned R1 is the measure of deflection for vehicles entering into the roundabout. So it's shown here. This is again R1. I'm going to blue. This is R1. Okay. This is the deflection um, of measure for, for vehicles entering the roundabout. This normally will give us a certain speed. So I'll show you how to calculate this in Excel in the next lesson. So for example, if you have a radius of 30 meters or 100 feet, what's the speed uh, in regards to this? So then the next is R2, as I talked about earlier. It's an offset from the central island. So it's for vehicles circulating around the roundabout. Then R3 is for exiting the roundabout. So how are the three measured? This is very important. So you shall find that R1 um, is roughly around one meter. So you start with an offset of one meter from the edge of roadway. So you offset one meter. So if you have the edge of roadway, get an offset of one meter or roughly around three feet. Now this is the tricky bit. Now from the edge of roadway, of, of the roadway, as you exit in the roundabout, this is not from here. It's very important to note, okay? It's not from here. This is wrong, okay? 
it is from the outer lane. So it's from the outer lane, you offset a distance of roughly 1.5 meters. So you start with one meter offset. Here you go to a 1.5 meter offset, which is roughly around five feet. Okay. So after you finished, again, you now go to the circulatory roadway. You offset a distance of five feet again, or 1.5 meters to get this. Okay, so you also offset that curve. Then again, the same. Always offset from the outer edge. Always remember, don't offset from this edge. This is wrong. Offset from the outer edge, and you offset a distance of five meters or 1.5. So this red now forms the R3. This forms the R2, and this forms the R1. And then finally, you offset roughly around one meter, okay, towards the end. This is the same as the start, it's the same as the finish. So once you have drawn this kind of curve, you first draw a line, then you offset this, then you try and join these two lines, then again you draw that. This is the fastest path, which combines R1, R2, and R3. We've talked about what R4 is. The left turn, which is R4, is it's just a measure of the deflection imposed by a vehicle prior to left turning at the roundabout. Let's look at the left turning path radius. So we're assuming you're driving on the right hand side. So RR4 is referred to as the left turn path radius. What's looking at is if you're coming and then you left turn on the roundabout make the left turn. So that's why it's called R4. And it's highlighted here as you've seen. And then we have R5. So we're going to calculate R4. In this case, let's say here the description you're looking at, you're looking at R5, but the calculation for R5 is the same. So again, you do the one meter offset. Then from the edge, you again do another 1.5 meter offset and then finally do the one meter offset. Okay, so this radius that's gotten here is a combination of R4 and R5. So R5, as mentioned, this is for the right turn. So we assume you're coming from the northern arm and you're right turning on the roundabout. So this is R5. So just to make this easier to understand in a nutshell, the arm that's approaching will have R1, R2, R3 to the opposite arm. Then where, where R3 ends, its entrance will, we look at the way traffic is moving to make a left turn. And then finally, the northern arm, which is roughly 90 degrees to the entry arm where we're measuring from, is we look at the right turn, which is R5. And again, as you can see, the calculation is the same. You do an offset of one meters at the start, 1.5 meters offset from the outer, and finally another one meter. So the curve that you're getting here is going to be R5 or R4, depending on the arm you've drawn it. You, should, you can uh, go to the next part where we look at the entry, um, open the entry path radius drawing. But in Civil 3D, when you show the heads up display, you shall be able to see R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Now, these R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 are very important because they influence the deflection, they influence the speed. So in the next lesson, we are going to look at something called speed profiles. So after you've calculated your R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, we then calculate what speed is R1, what speed is R2, what speed is R3, what speed is R4, what speed is R5. And we should always ensure we have speed consistency. So I hope to see you in the next lesson.